I've opened a lot of boxes in my lifetime, uh, a lot of audio equipment boxes. And well, first as a consumer, then as an audio salesman, and then as a reviewer. But this one, for the Triangle Comet 40th Anniversary Edition speakers, this one, this one kind of threw me for a loop. Because when I set my eyes upon the finish of these speakers, the Santos Rosewood finish was one of those, whoa, <laughs> that is absolutely spectacular. Just stunning, rich, deep, luxurious. I mean, just fantastic wood. I love wood. <laughs> But these speakers, I mean, they did have amazing sound. I, I learned that later. But just the, the first impression of this speaker was overwhelmingly incredible. I was blown away by the look and the feel of this speaker as I hoisted them up out of the boxes, put them up on their stands, hooked them up and started to listen. I was a goner right away. And then when the light hit them, the sun hit them and just sort of caressed that finish, real rosewood finish. I was like, yes, I love my job. These are amazing looking speakers and really excellent sounding speakers. Now, let's put this in some sort of context. So these are the 40th anniversary models. Now, the, the standard Comet has been in the line, I think, for 25 years. I think it's a, let's say, a beloved model. It's stuck around for a long time, <clears throat> which is why the wise folks at Triangle decided to make this one of their 40th anniversary models. There's, there's others as well. And, uh, but the standard Comet is made in China. This one, the 40th anniversary model, is made in France, where the high-end Triangle speakers are made. And the 40th anniversary Comet is, uh, each one is handcrafted in France, each one is uh, measured in an anechoic chamber, not just in a workbench, but actually in an anechoic chamber. Each one is listened to and evaluated by a technician. That's pretty special. That is pretty special for a speaker in this price range, which is $2,200. Now the standard Comet is $1,600. So there you go. The, the 40th anniversary also comes in one other finish, which is called uh, Blonde Sycamore. I'll put a picture of it up right now. And just to go back to the standard Comet, that comes in gloss black, gloss white, and vinyl wrap finishes. As I said, that was made in China. So though I never heard the standard Comet, I, I really can't comment on the differences, but I can describe the differences that I'm aware of that they told me about. For example, the standard Comet has a, well, they both have uh, horn-loaded tweeters, but the standard Comet has a titanium dome tweeter. And the 40th anniversary model has a rose gold anodized magnesium dome tweeter. I'll say that three times fast. They both share the same, as far as I know, 6.5 inch cellulose aka paper mid woofer. But the crossover components are different between the two models, the standard Comet and the 40th anniversary. They are both, as you can plainly see, front ported with two ports. Uh, so if you guys are weird about putting your speakers up against the wall, uh, okay, feel free to put this one closer to a wall, but I certainly wouldn't. I believe in pulling speakers out into the room and with a speaker that sounds as good as this one does, and I'll tell you about the sound, Shortly, yeah, you wouldn't want to jam this guy up against a wall. That would be a tragedy for the sound. Uh, what else can I tell you? Uh, oh, round back, there's a very nice set of binding posts. So at the end of today's episode, I will feature an Audiophiliac viewer system of the day. So hang out for that. But coming up right now, I'm going to describe the system that I was using to listen to the 40th anniversary speakers. Now, I'm, I always list the components that I've used in review systems, but I'm going to discuss them briefly in the reviews proper. 
every now and then I'm going to do that. And I'm going to do it in this review. So the front end of the system was a Blue Sound No 2i streamer and also an Oppo UDP203 Blu-ray player. The DAC was a Denifreps Ares, not an Ares 2, just the original Ares. So as for electronics, I used three different integrated amps. The L-Kit UT8600R, that's a 300B amp. The Air EX8 2.0, and I will be reviewing that one shortly. And the Gato, or Gato, Amp 150, I reviewed that a few months ago. And that was the main amp I used over the bulk of this review. And for a speaker comparison, I used the ELAC Unify Reference. So we got that covered. So these are horn speakers, they are. And I mean that as a compliment. They sound alive. But do they sound like Klipsch's? Do they sound like JBL's? No, no. They sound like French speakers? I don't know. Do they sound like triangle speakers? Yeah, they, they sound, they, they do remind me of other triangle speakers. It's been a while, but they do. I think so. Because they have, they do have a kind of refinement that, that I don't associate with clip speakers. Meaning, though they sound like horns, they don't have an aggression that clip speakers have. Yeah, I would put it that way. But they let you hear each instrument. That, that's what I think I associate with the sound of horns, is that each instrument in the mix stands out, right? So you hear them individually, and you hear them, each instrument's tone, and their harmonic envelope is individual, right? And that makes it sound, or they sound more realistic because of that, because they jump out of the mix more. That's what I get from horns, good horns, not all horns. Yes, horns back in the old days could be too in your face, too screechy. I'm talking about 21st century horns, let's put it that way. So at this point, I decided to play some rock. Jeff Beck and the album is called Who Else? And the track is The Space for Papa. And <laughs> it's, a good, it's a guitar, bass, and drums workout. And Jeff's guitar was on fire, just blasted, just screaming. My, my jaw was on the floor, and I was having a blast. I just loved it, man. It was perfect. Anyway, uh, at this point, I thought this is the perfect track to use as a test, a test track to compare against the ELAC Unify reference. So I put the Comets aside, hooked up the references, cranked it up again, and here's what I got. The references low end definitely went deeper and had greater impact, definitely. It could play louder with greater ease, and the imaging was better focused. There was clear delineation in the focus. That's what I got. But the Comet just had a more lively sound. It just had that life to it that I really, just gives me more more immediacy, more grit, more of this is happening now. So you could say, you could say it's a tie in a way, right? They're both really good and they're doing different things and they're, they're going to appeal to different buyers. Let's put it that way. Um, you know, as they used to say in the olden days, different strokes for different folks. I, I told you earlier I was going to use the uh, 300B amp, the L-Kit, TU-8600R with the 40th anniversary speaker, and I did. And you know what? It was kind of a disappointment. It was I have to admit, on paper, it wasn't an ideal match, and it wasn't an ideal match, in that it definitely felt underpowered. It was 9 watts channel. It's, not a, it's, it's about a 90 dB sensitivity speaker, so it was borderline acceptable, but it definitely felt like it didn't have enough juice to make it go. It sounded okay with acoustic music played at moderate levels, but nothing even there. It just wasn't intriguing enough to make it recommendable on any serious level. So that, that's, that amp went in and out pretty darn quick. 
But the other amp that I did try, which did sound really good, was the AIR uh, EX8 2.0. Now that amp, though, is $8,000, or at least it's I think it's $8,000 in the way it's configured that the way I'm going to review it is that is with a built-in DAC and uh, some other stuff. So it's not a reasonable marriage because it's much more expensive than the speakers. But that amp is a really sweet sounding amplifier. That amp just has this glow to it. It's a zero feedback amplifier. Gorgeous sounding amp. Doesn't sound like tubes. Not saying it sounds like tubes. But it's a beautiful, beautiful, organic, let's use that word. Tubes, no. Organic, round, rich, lush sounding, solid state amplifier. Not even like a pass, if that's what some of you are thinking. No, not even like a pass. It's, it's doing its own thing. And I'll have lots to say about it in its own review coming up. But anyway, that was a nice match. So if any of you out there have access to Air Electronics, which is what it does sound like, the EX8, um, yes, the Triangle speakers and Air Acoustics amplifiers are a sweet combination. But, like I said early on in this review, the Gato Amp 150 was the primary amp used over the course of this review. I just want to throw this one in quickly. Mary Lou Williams, Praise the Lord. It's gospel, it's jazz, it's not a great sounding recording, but it has vitality. It has soul. It's, it has rhythm and pace. It makes you want to get up and dance. It's it's not it's fun it's not fun's not the right word but it has it has soul that's what it has it has feeling to it and um the the comet 40th anniversary they were connecting with that soul they just let it free they set it free that's what i'm trying to say and that's what makes this speaker so good is it connects the dots, you know, it just puts you inside the music. I think, you know, I think at the end of the day, uh, recordings can sound good, they can sound bad, they can sound medium, right? It's how they let the music pass through that really matters, right? That's, that's kind of, that's probably the most important thing. Which leads me to the Rolling Stones. Now, I... As the decades roll by, I have to say my appreciation of the, my appreciation of the Rolling Stones work, uh, especially of their first decade, meaning up to 1970 or early 1970s, they were the best band. They were the world's greatest rock and roll band. Rock and roll band. I think way better than the Beatles as a rock and roll band, not as creative people necessarily, but as a rock and roll band, especially live, much better than the Beatles as a live performing band. And you can hear that in their, I think, second live album called Love You Live. And I was playing that record, which is a you know, decent recording for its time period. And uh, yeah, they, that record, that recording was lighting up the 40th anniversary speakers big time really good really really good especially with the air because the air ex8 amp was smoothing over the rough edges just right that combination was really really sweet so yeah the stones just the combination of all the original members of the well not all the original members but the the most the, the right <laughs> original members of the band just really locking in uh, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> it's not literally all the original members, but the key members of the band were all there. And um, yeah. But if you're curious, if you're Rolling Stones curious and you want to dip your toe in, start with that one, Love You Live. And I'll, I'll, just, I'll just leave it there, okay? We'll just leave it there. So this is it. This has been my review of the Comet 40th Anniversary Edition speaker. It's not a big room speaker. It's not a blaster kind of speaker. It's not that. But for the right kind of sophisticated buyer who wants a live sound, wants to be swept away by the music, 
This is a wonderful speaker. So are you ready for this? Are you ready to take in the majesty of the audiophiliac viewer system of the day? These rather ambitious DIY amplifiers were designed and built by Charles and a friend over a four year period. They made three prototypes and then these final 300B push-pull 20 watt pure class A monoblocks. Also he has an Audio Nirvana EL34 single ended triode stereo class A integrated amplifier, Audible Illusions Modulus 3 tube preamplifier, a Sony CDP XA20ES CD player, an Oracle Delphi Mark I turntable with Fidelity Research 64S tone arm with various cartridges. There's a Blue Sound No 2i streamer, an ELAC Unify UB5 speakers. Well, there's two of them. Then there's also these speakers. There's a DIY speaker with an 8 inch Audio Nirvana full range single driver. Another DIY speaker with this one with a 10 inch Audio Nirvana full range single driver. Charles notes that the speaker collection can seem a bit confusing, but he has a switch for sources, amps, and speakers. He says that he's enjoying outstanding sound staging, imaging, and dynamics for a detailed, open, and airy music presentation. Good going, Charles. That was spectacular. <laughs> And speaking of spectacular, my name is Steve Guttenberg, and this is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. Uh, and speaking of spectacular, uh, if you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing to this channel. To do so, as you know by now, it's super easy to do. Hit that button right, right, right down there. And when you do, hit the freaking bell so you'll be notified every time there's an incredible new episode. You might also be curious, yes, you might be Patreon curious, and if you are, check it out at p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash audiophiliac, and there's a link to the Patreon in the description, absolutely. The playlists are many, but the playlists for speaker reviews are, it's right up there. I hope you can see that playlist, it's right there for speaker reviews, and there's also playlists for electronics reviews and headphone reviews, not to mention, but I will, music reviews plus oodles, oodles and oodles of interviews. But since the sirens are approaching, I, I now have to say my work here is at last complete. Thank you again for watching, and I really do, and I mean that, hope to see you back here again. Very, 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 very soon. Bye-bye.